from somewhere in Hollywood. It's the, 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 the Tom Micah Show. Oh, my God. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. Different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right wing wacko or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. I just see if you're paying attention. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1 800 5 800 Tom. 1 800 5 800 Don't expect me to do this by rote. For God's sake, let me change it up once in a while. Oh. Thanks for being part of our program. You may have heard me on the air complaining about a woman sitting next to me on a plane who uh, had her chihuahua with her. And now we're something completely different. It is so obvious when unmarried women are walking around with animals that these are women who want to have babies. And because they can't find the right man with whom to have a baby... And because they don't want to shoulder that burden alone, they get animals. There is a woman who lives down the block from me. Do you know anybody like this? This is a woman who uh, is in her late 30s. And she... uh, has lived alone all the time I've known her. I don't really know her that well. For a period of time, she had a boyfriend, but that didn't work out. And so there she is, living alone, except for a menagerie. And the number changes all the time. One, two, five, six. A menagerie of not just dogs... She goes to animal shelters and rescues dogs. Now, anybody who's ever been to a dog pound to go, ever go to, you know, people say, oh, don't go to one of those breeders. Don't go to a pet shop. Go to a dog pound. There's so many unwanted pets. Go to a dog pound. But of course, many of the dogs at the dog pound were terrorized by their mean owners, kicked around, beaten. Locked in closets, locked in kennels. So by the time they get to you, they can be downright scared of you or worse yet, dangerous to you. By the way, speaking of this, have you seen the latest source of abandoned pets? There was a big story about this the other day. Have you seen this? There's a new source, I'm not making this up, there's a new source of abandoned pets. A whole new category. I was kind of blown away by this. It'll give you the idea of how deep the commitment is when people go out and they decide they need to get a dog or a kitty cat. The minute things uh, get difficult, they cut and run. I'm not making this up. Cities where there's a large number of mortgage foreclosures, people lose their home. They are abandoning their dogs and cats. In fact, some of them just leave the dogs and cats at the residence so they don't have to go to the pound and explain, you know, what's going on with the dog. They don't want to get turned down. Uh, there are people actually like, all right, so you've been foreclosed and you have to leave the premises by a certain date. They just leave the animals behind at the house and lock the door and they go. So now there's tens of thousands more abandoned animals because people bought houses they couldn't afford and then went out and stupidly adopted animals. But I digress. 
this woman down the block can't find the right guy, can't find a husband. I'm not even sure about her desire to bear children, but I have a feeling she must have that desire because she's got up to, at any given time, half a dozen rescued dogs living in her home. You see her walking them down the block. One person down the block was attacked by one of her dogs. I'm so sorry, she said. It's like, tell it to the judge when you get sued. <laughs> but it's so obvious that there are women who are desperate to have children, and when they can't get what they want, when they can't meet men who can stand to talk to them, or men who want to pay their bills or take on their responsibilities. The, these are the women who, instead of having babies, they go to the pet shop or the dog pound, and they adopt animals, and then they treat them like babies. The woman, I'm not making this up, the woman on the plane who had the chihuahua in her lap, as you know, recently the New York Giants won the Super Bowl, so it was time to get off the plane. She she dressed her little animal. He was wearing a New York Giants sweater made for dogs. Oh, yes. The dog also had a rhinestone collar. <laughs> I mean, I, I got to tell you, there's a couple of things guys have to be aware of. Number one. A woman who has pets wants babies. I know women who don't have pets. And it's fascinating. It's pretty consistent. The women with pets are using them as a substitute for babies they haven't had yet. And sometimes they, they, they think, maybe I'll never have a baby, so I have a pet. And number two, how about the women who expect you to interact with their pet? You know, they are testing you. When a woman asks you to pick up Fluffy and hold her and pet her and then judges how comfortable Fluffy is with you or is not with you, she is judging your ability as a parent, don't you think? I don't want to pick up somebody's cat. By the way, I'm allergic to certain breeds of cats. I don't want to pick up your cat. I just don't want to do it. No, I, I don't. How I get along with your dog, very important. One woman I once dated told me that she had had a dog she loved very much. And the way she decided whether a guy was going to stay or go was whether or not her dog liked him. And she literally said if her dog didn't like a guy, she stopped dating him. That's insanity. That That is absolute insanity. Maybe some people don't want to be around dogs, don't want to pet dogs, don't want to... But you see, this is a test. Women think if you can't be with their dogs, you can't be a parent to their children. If you can't be with their cats or their other pets, hell, I've been with women who have guinea pigs and hamsters and you name it, they, they look to see how you are with their pets. It's a test. I know I'm not making this up. I know it's true. Oh, my goodness. When you go to these uh, apartments, women rarely own houses on their own unless they're single mothers. You go to these women's apartments... And they've got the pets running around, and the pets are eating gourmet cat food, whatever that is. They're having dogs eating gourmet dog food. Dogs eat vomit. Dogs eat their own waste. You do not have to get a dog gourmet anything. And there are women who just lavish all this money and attention on their dogs. It's pretty outrageous. But I would say women, especially women who have lots of pets, they are to be avoided resolutely. They will choose the pets over you. 
Many times these women have the pets sleeping in their bed every night. I mean, I have known women who have like 180-pound dogs. In the absence of men, the dog makes her feel warm and protected at night. You know, a lot of guys are about 180 pounds, and there's women who have, actually have 180-pound dogs. These women are trouble. And if there were some reason, you know, these are the women, uh, by the way, I've been with women, with dogs. I have experience with this. How about the woman I was with? Every time I went away on business, I tried to bring my one of my ex-girlfriends with me when I would travel. And then she would ask me, well, we got to take the dog. We got to take the dog. And she would like start calling the airlines to find out which airline could take the dog. Many times we had to fly on separate planes because one airline would take the dog and the airline that I was flying on didn't. So she would have to meet me later with the dog in tow. Many uh, weekends we would have spent out of town. We didn't because she couldn't find someone to take care of the dog. What is that all about? Are you kidding me? We're going to go away. We got to take the dog. What is that? It's a dog. It's not a baby. It's a dog. But women see them like babies. Women see them like children. These are the children they never had. It's pathetic. Don't you think? Tom like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. I support the feminists. Are you a feminist? Yes, I am. Really? Yeah, they're 100% equal to men. I don't pay for nothing. It's the Tom Likey Show. The Tom Likas Show, 1-800-5800-TOM. Thank you for tuning in. Greg is calling from Portland, Oregon, home of the other white meat. On the Tom Likas Show, hello. Hello, Tom! Hello, Greg! How are you today? Do you care? No, I've been an avid listener for about a couple months. Um, should I tell you something about this girl that I met while I've been out here in Portland, Oregon? She's 38 years old. I'll be 30 next this month. And, uh, she divorced her husband and he shot himself six months later. And then she went out and bought a dog. And, uh, I basically tried to get in her pants, tried to get in her bed. And this huge, huge dog was sitting there with me and I couldn't do any, I couldn't get anything accomplished. Really? Really. Wow. She cared more about the dog than she cared about any other man. Uh, but, you know, she had a lot of baggage, though. I think a lot of these women have baggage. Especially when they get 38. She didn't have any kids. She was gorgeous. I was dating a 22-year-old at the time. Uh, through listening to your show, thank God that's over. Wow. Yeah, yeah I, I think that's a red flag. But women own a lot of pets. That's not a sign of nurturing and love. That's a sign of trouble. She also had a cat as well, too, now that you talk about... They generally... Hey, 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 oh. we're on the air. We're on the air. Uh, I apologize. I'm sorry. Yeah. But, yeah, uh, I'd stay away from those women that, that, that care more about... Actually, just any women that lets an animal sleep in the same bed with them, I'd try to avoid. They're They're insane. I dated a woman once who had a cat, which, of course, she refused to declaw because that would be cruelty to animals. <laughs> Whacking their nuts off, on the other hand, is not cruelty to animals, <laughs> but declawing them would be cruel, even though the cat never left the house, never faced any predators. All the cat did was use, like, the big speakers as uh, scratching posts. All the furniture of the house is scratching posts. And cat hair is everywhere. Cat it's hair is everywhere. You, you can smell hearing. you can smell the litter box at 50 paces from the front door. Do you know where she kept her litter box to her cat when I was seeing her? She kept the litter box in her room. Oh, boy. Dude, it was disgusting. So you're walking. Have you ever had this experience? Think about this. 
ever walk like all right, you've just had sex with one of these bronze, then you gotta you know go to the bathroom and like relieve yourself, and and on the way over there you're walking barefoot and you can feel like sand, you feel cat litter <laughs> between your toes. You walk into the bathroom. Has that ever happened to you? It has, <laughs> hasn't yet, it? Not yet, but as soon as it does, I'm out of there. Like. Oh. Well, anyway, this one chick who had the the cat that she wouldn't declaw because it would be cruel. Uh, this cat did not understand what was happening when we were having sex. I think the cat thought that we were attacking, or I was attacking her somehow. <laughs> so the cat would jump up and start clawing my feet. Oh, no. One time I looked up, it looked like I'd stepped on razor blades. Yeah. See, I'm in the bed with her, and this, this monstrosity of a dog, it's one of the biggest dogs you could possibly buy. I can't remember it. The life of me, I'm not a, guy, a pet person, but uh, it would like I would be sleeping in the bed, just trying to get on, get my you know get on with it, and then uh, you'd come over here, start either whining or or, or or barking or craving attention, trying to get all the attention that I'm trying to get her to to, to give to me. He's uh, the dog is sitting there craving. Oh yeah, it, it, it's no good. You know what it's like walking with your. Your uh, feet cut to ribbons, and then you have to walk to the bathroom, and then you're getting cat litter in those wounds, <laughs> those fresh wounds. <laughs> and you don't know if it's cat litter that has been, like, let's just say used or unused. Hey, hey, Tom, I'm a taxi driver. I got a fare coming up. I got to let you go. Could you do me a favor and take me out Polish style? What would that be? I don't know. You got any polka or anything, man? I got to thank you, man. I'm finally over this 22-year-old, too, man. You helped me out. A lot of, I take a lot of what you say to heart, man. You've helped me out in a lot of, uh, e even financially since I've been out here for a couple months. I thank you for that, sir. Well, I'm glad to hear that. All right, Polish style. Here you go. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom, it's Bill on the Tom Likas show. Hello, Tom. How are you doing today? Doing great, Bill. Fantastic, fantastic. I got a call about these uh, girls and these dogs and these animals, and right. the matching outfits. You see these fat and fugly chicks with the uh, the matching dog outfits, and uh, I'll tell you, one time in my life, I actually picked up on one of these girls and uh, was lucky enough to go home with her. And we were kind of getting busy on the couch in her house, and she said, hey, let's go into the next room. And I said, sure. So we go into the next room, and she's, uh, we get down on the floor, and she's at phone. And I'm kind of stretching my arms out, and all of a sudden I say to myself, whoa, wait a second, this carpet, uh, this carpet either is not cleaned or, you know, it's got some bumps on the floor. And... Uh, we turn on the lights, and sure enough, I am surrounded with an acre of dog turd all around me. And oh, oh. Tom, I started gagging. I was thrown. I, I, I couldn't get my pants uh, quick enough. I was gagging. I was puking on myself. I couldn't run fast enough. And Tom. did she try to get you to stay? Oh, absolutely, Tom. You know, and the thing about it was she couldn't smell the ammonia smell that I could smell. The moment I walked in the door, I said to myself, I just have to pull this off. I got to get through this. And I thought everything was okay. And if I'd seen what the room looked like before I laid down, I would never have gone in it. Oh, but, my. But sure, enough, but sure enough, I did. And when I turned it on, literally, it looked like someone, someone's backyard had a pack of dogs in it for the last five years. Oh, you're killing me, Larry. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Let's say hello here to <laughs> Josh on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Happy Wednesday to you. Yeah, same to you. Thank you very much. I'm here in lovely L.A., horrible traffic central of the world, but I'm a Scottsdale, Arizona resident, and it's nice to hear your voice again. Thank you. The reason for the phone call is the pet topic. Uh, obviously, it sounds like these girls are trying to fill some sort of void, whether it's a cat, a dog. You know, one guy mentioned turtles. Um, I'm kind of getting involved with just barely with a girl that has two or three parakeets. I can't figure it out because I don't care for their names or anything like that. But this girl has two parakeets, and she's only been over to my house yet so far. 
And uh, but she always has like bite marks on her because apparently parakeets like to bite. And I was just curious what you thought a rat with wings, what kind of void that would be feeling. Well, it depends on whether they are loose, but you know, again, it's the same thing. You know, it's just that void that these women have because they're not having babies. Somebody talked to me about how fat women tend to be animal people, fat women. And there's a reason for that. Fat women are less likely to ever get married to somebody who will have babies with them. So, of course, they are they're animal people. Of course they are. They're the ones on Sunday who are standing out in the parking lot of some bank, you know, uh, doing the pet adoptions and the ones who belong to all these organizations. They're the ones because no guy is ever going to impregnate them. That's why. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. Brandon on the Tom Like a Show. Hello. Pleasure to talk to you, Tom. It Tom. sure is. <laughs> uh, you know, I do consider you a fairly logical and rational man, way above the, the national average for sure. But I do disagree with you on this topic. Um, although I do think a lot of women try to adopt to fill the void, uh, and I know you're not saying all women are like that, but I'm a guy with animals. And if a woman can't hang with that, man, she gets the boot to the door. I don't care how fine she is. Uh, it's, you know, it, it, it's, I, I guess it's because I was raised with them. It's, it's just the love with the, with the animals. I don't know what it is. Well, I love, I love dogs, but, uh, I, again, if, first of all, it's how many you have. And for me, having more than one is, you know, it's excessive. I know I would agree with you, and I, and I definitely do think there are girls out there that that take it beyond, and, and a lot of them do it for all the wrong reasons. But they, and then they treating feel, them like people. Ah, uh, you know what? <laughs> I, I fall into that category, man. These are my they're kids. not they, people. You know, they're as important to me as as people are. As important. That's because you don't have kids, kids, and I'll bet you want to have kids someday. I, I definitely don't. I, I fall, that's why I fall under your guidelines. I'd like to stay single and uh, kidless as, as long as possible, and. Uh, my animals Do you feed the gourmet food. dog food, whatever that is? <laughs> you do, you don't you? You always bring up good points, Tom, and uh, you, you are a good man for what you do. But, uh, you know, I think there's a difference. You didn't answer my things. question. What was that? Do you feed your dogs gourmet dog food? I don't. I don't. I feed them the standardized kibble and bit, if you know what I mean. Uh, All right. Because lots of uh, these women do that, you know. I know. I would agree with you. I, th I think. I think. Like, Do your dogs ever wear clothing of any kind? What was that? I'm sorry. Do your dogs wear clothing? No. <laughs> Tom, they got a collar and they got a metal leash, and uh, they go to the beach on the weekends. That's about as much as they get. And how many do you have? I've got about three, Tom. Why wouldn't one be enough? I, you know what? Because I, you know, I, I see these animals. They don't have a choice. They're not. They're not here because they wanted to be. They need a home. And you got stupid people like you mentioned with the mortgage. Well, what do you do? Yeah, yeah. Does that mean you? I mean, clearly, you can't travel like I can. No, I understand it's a sacrifice. But you why know, would you? Why would you do that? I mean, look. Once you've got children, or once you get married, or once you're like uh, not likely to be traveling anymore. All right, fine. But at this point in your life, you're 25 years old. Why would you want to uh, keep yourself from be being free to do whatever you want, whenever you want? Uh, you know what? It, it, it's a sacrifice. Do you know what a drag it is? Do you know what a drag it is? When, I, when I'm dating a chick and she says, I have to go home and feed my dog? Well, you know, I, I, I can't live with myself knowing these dogs are going to be euthanized if I if take people like myself not doing something about it. It's either that or they die. <laughs> Many of them do. Why don't you have 300 dogs? Uh, you know what I do? I try to do my part, at least what I'm able to do. But, you know, I understand that there are girls out there that do these crazy things, and I think women in general are just crazy. Uh, but, uh, you know. So do you, ever, do, you ever go on, like, do you ever go on a real weekend away or a real vacation? Uh, like I said, it's difficult. I, I, I do take uh, week-long journeys for conferences and, and different things like that. But, you know, I have my responsibilities to get them sitters. Or to make sure they're cared for, at least. It's a sacrifice. I understand that. And then I'm 25, and it's, just, it's either that or them get euthanized. You know, what are you going to do? Let somebody else do the adopting. <laughs> it's so much That's work. Like a scapegoat to me, Tom. I might add, you know, here, when I'm at work, where's that dog going to go? Who's he going to hang out with? Uh, you know, Tom, you know, I, I'm not sure if you were raised with animals or not. I, mean, I was. I, I was. Uh, I had a dog as a kid. 
And in fact, I've been with the girlfriends who've had dogs. But when I wasn't around, the girlfriend would be with the dog. So the dog was not left sitting in an apartment or a house for eight, ten hours at a time alone. I you know. I, I just see it as the lesser of the two evils. It's either that or a cage in a pound or a, a six feet under in the ground. It's, you know, it's, I guess I consider it a passion, but, uh, you know, not everybody's like that. I mean, I was just able uh, to, uh, to go to uh, New York for the weekend to see the Super Bowl with my brother on TV and go to a couple of hockey games and hang out with my nephew. I didn't have to beg people for a favor to take care of my dog. You know, Tom, I do got to add a, a nice point to this, though. It's a great way to pick up chicks. You go down to the dog beach out here in Southern California in the Huntington Beach, and uh, you get some beautiful women who just get, you know, all, all googly-eyed when they see, you know, a guy with a dog. I don't know well, what that's, it is. Well, that's why it'd be a good idea to get a job as a part-time dog walker. Walk other people's dogs. Hey, they'll pay my school bills, Tom. Get them some work. <laughs> Thank hey, you, Tom, Brandon. Can you take me out, poke the style, and keep that alive? Yes, I guess I can. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. Tom Likas. One eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. I don't trust anything that bleeds for a week and doesn't die. <laughs> it's the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show coming from Hollywood. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. How pathetic the chicks with all these animals replacing the children they'll never have. Uh, 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 uh. Adam is calling from practically the exact street corner I was just staying at in New York City, 33rd Street and 7th Avenue. He's listening online on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. How's it going? It's going okay, Adam. Listen to you online. I uh, haven't heard your show in a while, but I'm glad I uh, finally got a chance to call in. Me too. Um, yeah, I want to talk about I know you as a former New Yorker. Um, I met a girl probably about a year and a half ago in a bar in Midtown, and she was one of these Upper East Side uh, Jappy types, um, kind of like the Sex in the City type, who always carried a stupid Yorkie in her bag. No and was she like the way. Sex in the City type with the turkey neck? She was like an aging single? She was probably in her late 30s or something. Right. Right, right. You know, you know, I, I know the type. Exactly. The real Jappy type with the friend dresser voice. It got <laughs> to the point I couldn't, uh, I only dated her for about a month and a half, two months. I just couldn't take uh, take her bringing that uh, York, that damn Yorkie everywhere. It got to the point where I wanted her to kick it through the upright. <laughs> now you know why they call that part of the Upper East Side Yorktown. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for that, Adam. Thank you, Tom. Have a great one. 33rd and 7th, Madison Square Garden. I was just there. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Julie on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Julie. How are you, Tom? And I do care. I'm doing great. Well, I'm listening to all these callers, and they're all about women having dogs, but I dated a guy that had a dog, too, and every time I was over there and every time I wanted attention from this guy, this damn dog would be sticking his nose, like, right in between us. It's almost like the, the female dog knew another female was around, and it would get jealous. I'm telling you, this dog was even more jealous than his ex-wife. By the way, I don't think with a dog, gender has anything to do with it. Male dogs are the same thing. Uh, if, really? if a male dog sees that uh, that the people are getting attention, they want attention, too. My goodness. And every time we'd, like, you know, go to bed, this dog was used to sleeping on that bed, and every time I'd wash it, this dog would... It was one of those, like, dogs he got, like, at a shelter home. Like, like he picked the most ugliest one because he felt sorry for it. Right. <laughs> you know, one of those dogs. Right. Well, yeah, I have a rule. I have a rule. If, if anyone ever does have a dog in my place, no dogs in my bed. And yeah. no dogs in your bed if I'm in your bed. No dogs. Yep. I no dogs, no cats, nothing. 
And this guy, I guess, got this dog right after his uh, divorce. So he said he got it because he was just lonely. So I think men, you know, don't do it so much for babies, but, like, when they don't have, like, a certain significant other. Yikes. That's what I think. Thank you for that, Julie. I appreciate the call. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. Peter on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Professor. Hello, Peter. This is a second-time caller. I've been listening to your show for about a year now. Yeah, um, I'm just calling. I was seeing this one girl. This happened a couple of years ago. I was 23 years of age at the time. She was in her mid-20s. And, man, I mean... I just, I, I mean, I, I'm a dog lover myself, but I just hated this month because there were so many occasions where, you know, I know I'm on the radio, we're in the, in the room, I'm about to have intercourse, and we're actually in the middle of having intercourse, and the dog starts barking and yapping, and she stops. And I'm like, hey, what are you doing? And she's like, oh, I'm, you know, to attend the dog. And I'm like, what are you doing? What are you, you know, and that. That, I mean, that really just would have me so ticked. Um, <laughs> I mean, oh, my God. I mean, it, it got to a point where I felt like poisoning this dog. Cause, I mean, and then, you know, I see that after, like, the third month, you know, seeing her, she wanted me to move in, right? Because she said she, she, um, she didn't want to be by herself. And that's when I dumped her. I go, you know what? Well, you have your dog, you know. That's all you need because I don't like being second place to nobody, especially an animal, you know. Yeah, so just get the hell out of there. That's what I would do, for God's sake. Dina on the Tom Likas Show, hello. Hey, how you doing? Great. Hey, I wanted to tell you that I understand uh, women replacing, um, having dogs in in place of babies. Um I know somebody that has a dog in replace of a man, and I just wanted to say it's not always about babies. Well, when that happens, you're never going to have a man. It becomes a foregone conclusion. Uh, let me tell you. Let me tell you. Um, these dogs get it, – it trips me out because they, they get the light on when no one's home. Why do they need the light on? What do they care? <laughs> They're going to sleep anyway. That's exactly right. What are they? They gonna read, uh, curl up, and read a book while you're gone or something? <laughs> That's what I'm thinking, and it's like you know, it's like uh, the people. It's like the people. Uh, these women who leave the radio on all day, or they leave the mm-hmm. TV on. She's gonna be lonely. It, it, and she. It, it's almost like you know, she has conversations with these dogs, like they understand what she's saying, and I'm. It, and she puts the dogs up members for affection and like wink and if the dogs poop on the floor she picks it up but doesn't discipline them doesn't clean it it just it trips me out these dogs are not going to make you happy like a man can wow just wanted to share that i'm glad you did well thank you thank you for the call 1-800-5800-TOM that's our telephone number let's say hello here to luke on the tom like his show hello hello tom hello luke Nice talking to you, buddy. First time, long time. Thank you. All right. Here's what I'm thinking. Here in America, everybody does this kind of stuff with their dog. Make sure they drink Avion water. Give them all this special food and attention. I was I went backpacking through all sorts of crazy parts of the world, and I had a dog as a kid. Same with you, Tom. You know, I'm not an animal hater or anything. But when I was in Vietnam, I met some Vietnamese people. And they invited me out for dinner, which happened to be dog. So I didn't want to be rude. I ate the dog, and, you know, it didn't taste good. But at the same time, for anybody to argue that that's inhumane or that's wrong, look at a place like India with over a billion people. They don't eat cows. And so anybody who's eating a hamburger while they're petting their dog calling me a hypocrite, uh, I think they are kind of contradicting themselves. Boy. I don't get it. I don't get it. And the thing is, I, I really do think these people, I think when they've got animals, they are pretty much guaranteeing a life of living with only animals. Because really, how many people want to move into your place that is just slightly damaged or smells slightly or whatever? Who wants that? It's horrible, Tom. I'll tell you what, though. Uh, for all the people that are offended by what I'm saying, I'm glad I ate the dogs and they're really cute. How about that? Can you kick me out with a choking bong hit? And I, uh, thank you, Jesus. Yes, I can. Here you go. <coughs> thank you, Jesus. It's 
one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello to Scott on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Dad. Son. Oi, hey. You talk about you talk about bad. I had a girlfriend for a brief period of time. She had two dogs, six cats, three birds, and a tank with three turtles in it. And the gag factor on that last one was beyond your wildest comprehension. Really? Oi. Yeah, I'd walk into the the place, and even if she had just finished cleaning everything, it was like, oh, something died in here, and it was big when it died, and it's not done decomposing. It was horrible smell. Um, and I, I and I just saw how she treated her animals. I was like, if, if I even remotely thought of creating kids, it wouldn't be with this female. Ugh. Disgusting. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, just just the germ factor on the on the turtles, salmonella, and all the other nif- nifty things that they can carry, and it was just it was just horrible. Yikes! Thank you for that. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom is our telephone number. Lindsay on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey, Lindsay. <laughs> Oh, my gosh. I've been listening to you forever, and I'm laughing my butt off right now. Yeah. I have the most disgusting story to tell you. Okay, my boyfriend, he just got this dog from a friend who, like, couldn't take care of the dog, um, and she's a Jack Russell. Oh, my God, Tom. She, like, literally took my place. This guy, my boyfriend, just knocks down with this dog. She's always kissing on her, holding on her. She's in the bed. Her hair's everywhere. He doesn't give her a bath. It's disgusting. And to top it all off, she's on her period. Ugh. It's disgusting. And so I've slapped some huggies on her ass. <laughs> what do you do with a dog that's having its period? Well, I feel, you know, I feel kind of bad because I was like, you know, I couldn't believe that they didn't get this dog sick. But I'm so bad. Oh, well, we'll never hear the rest of that. Wow. Alexis on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello. How are you, Tom? Great. Great. Well, I'm just calling because I just think that guy who called just now was ridiculous, and I can't believe what he was saying. Which one and and for what reason? The one who was talking about eating dog and how he said it was cute and he ate it anyway. I mean, that comment was just... Well, I mean, let's face it. We eat animals. I don't know well, why, why uh, frankly, I, I couldn't stomach the idea of eating a dog myself, but by the same token, uh, how is it different from eating a cow? Well, I mean, it's I, technically it's not. It's a mammal. It's an animal. But still, dogs do, you know, form relationships with people and have different, uh, you know, personalities than cows and things like that. It's a different situation. I've talked to people who would argue the opposite, that uh, cows do have personalities, uh, that they have forged relationships with them. <laughs> well, that just seems a little silly to me, but it could be true. But still, I mean, you know, how can you knock people for, you know, loving an animal? It's th- What's wrong with that? I love animals, but but here's what I don't love. I don't love having the lack of freedom uh, that I have when I am not responsible for an animal. Uh, just like children, the reason I don't have a dog Mm-hmm. is because I can't adequately spend time and, and drop everything to take care of a dog. I right. love, I have friends who have dogs. I love spending time with them. Right. And then I get to leave and they get to walk the dog in the rain. Yeah. Well, <laughs> but that's their choice, you know. And it is their like choice. Me, I have time to do that and I don't have kids. I'm, you know, I work, but I have plenty of time for my dog and she's well behaved. But that's because you don't have a husband or children. No, of course not. But and, and and what will that do to your prospects for having a husband or children? I don't think it will do anything because she's well behaved. She's trained. She doesn't make a mess. She listens. She doesn't. You know. Does she sleep in bed with you? No. Ever. She sleeps on a dog bed. Never comes into your bed. Once in a while, if I if I ask her to, yes, and mm. then if I ask her to get down, she gets down. Men hate that, you know. I know, my boyfriend absolutely hated it, but... Oh, so that's why you got the dog bed. The Tom Likas Show.